dear students today we will be discussing about design and development of literacy materials in adult education the state resource centers srcs are mandated to provide academic and technical resource support to adult and continuing education through development and production of material and training modules post literacy learning strategies as developed by the national literacy mission envisage the provision of learning opportunities both in structured and unstructured situations structured situation refers to organized learning where primers or graded textual material as well as suitably designed supplementary reading books for neo literates unstructured situations refer to widely differing literacy abilities necessitating the provision of a wide range of learning materials and tools these range from wall newspapers to book corners or libraries various media like radio and television are also used along with local art forms study tours and excursions the post literacy program thus serves as an umbrella under which a host of development activities are taken up skill development forms a major component of post literacy enterprising district collectors have been able to dovetail skill development with an innovative development scheme It is during the post literacy phase that linkages with other departments especially with health rural development and environment are forged one of the most important tasks of the post literacy is the mopping up operation or remediation those learners who dropped out of the total literacy campaigns phase or could not achieve the prescribed norms of literacy are unable to achieve the required levels The first phase of the post literacy program envisages 40 hours of guided learning focusing not only on remediation retention and consolidation of literacy skills of neo literates but seeking to ingrain the reading habit in them so that they are able to put their literacy skills to good use in their daily life The next phase of the post literacy program provides opportunities for unstructured learning through self directed processes The Jan Chetna Kendras are used as an open window for dissemination of information regarding ongoing development schemes. Many districts have brought out simplified booklets on development schemes for neo literates that have helped them to make informed choices. Districts are encouraged to create a pool of literature by holding a writers workshop and tapping the talent of local storytellers. The village library movement is yet another initiative to promote self-reliance in learning. In each village where the number of neo literates is substantial, small patagars with a reading room or a library in the existing sikshan kendra or youth club should be established. Similarly, at the block level, preferably in the library of the secondary or higher secondary schools, separate sections for neo literates can be created. This support library at the block level is expected to nurture the library at the village level. It could also lend books and rotate them to different villages on a weekly, fortnightly and monthly basis. The creation of a library for each village unit of 100 learners is central to the organization of all post literacy activities. To be effective therefore learning materials for post literacy must have the following features 1 fitting the curriculum they must focus on the intended outcomes of the curriculum in the case of the exemplar curriculum given they must reflect the skills of autonomous learning and contribute to the development of an autonomous person they must cover the content areas of the curriculum they must be carefully graded to correspond to the competency levels at the standards defined by the curriculum that is there should be in the case of the exemplar a set of materials for each of the competency levels a b and c and each product should be returned to the agreed standard two characteristics of effective materials as well as closely fitting the parameters of the post literacy curriculum learning materials must be educationally sound interesting attractive 
comprehensive and useful for the learners. Educationally sound. The materials should be activity oriented and be soundly based in theories of adult learning. The systems model for materials design has been shown to be effective involving teaming steps presented as cycles of output input process but whether or not such an approach is used the materials should draw on what is known about promoting the most optimal conditions for teaming. Attractively produced post literacy programs are frequently criticized as being uninteresting unattractive and hence ineffective. Packaging is important. The materials should look and feel welcoming and encouraging. Poorly printed or packaged materials suggest to learners that there is something second rate about the program. Varied in format. At present, attractive mass media affect every aspect of people's life. Radio, television, cinema are everywhere. We can also fold attractive and interesting varieties of folk media. Therefore, it is necessary to combine effectively reading materials and audiovisual materials. In contrast to such all pervasive audiovisual media, if we promote post literacy education through only traditional methods such as chalk and talk, the program could well fail. In designing any post literacy curriculum, the needs of the learners should be paramount. Disadvantaged groups should be especially well catered for. Groups needing special attention include women in rural areas, slum dwellers and ethnic and cultural minorities. In designing materials for women, for example, the following procedure should be followed. Collect information and data on needs and problems from women so as to gain insight into women's perspectives. Study and identify how women figure within the context of the entire community. Utilize a variety of survey methods based on the psychology of women who face many difficulties. These methods could include observation, discussion, interviews, field visits and document analysis. In the above context, we should encourage women's involvement and participation in the material design from national level to local level. Otherwise, most of the materials for post literacy will be mainly designed from the point of view of men's psychological biases and values. Similarly, we should involve other disadvantaged groups such as street children and slum dwellers. Based on the most urgent needs and problems raised by their participation and involvement, we should develop carefully targeted learning materials. 3. Production Steps at all the stages in development, the broad areas of content and the competency standards as specified in the curriculum framework must be carefully adhered to. Separate blocks of material should be developed for each cell of the curriculum grid. Wherever possible, many titles should be produced for each cell and while there should always be a core of purely reading material, other formats should be included if at all possible. Four. Field survey of needs. The overall framework for any educational program should be based on an analysis of the genuine needs of the clientele. This is particularly the case in the area of post literacy where motivation is a central problem. The overall aims, objectives and outcomes should be determined by the needs as should the broad areas of subject matter and the standards to be achieved at each level of competency. Each learning resource should be developed with the needs of the learners in mind and these needs should be satisfied wherever possible. No matter how expensive the learner resources may be and no matter how superficially attractive the packaging and the format, they remain relatively useless if they are not directly relevant to the needs of the people in the target community. Service of needs, therefore, are vitally important for both broad curriculum design and for the production of effective learning resources. Needs surveys may be either formal or informal and some comment on each is provided below. A. Formal needs survey. This can be done through general observation and interviewing. In making the observation, the planner or designer will have to visit the target community to observe community profiles and living condition. These include, for example, day-to-day -day living and occupation, women's roles, 
children's problems and so on. Collecting data may involve taking notes, taking photographs and making video recordings. B. Informal Needs Survey Needs survey can be done informally through ordinary conversation during which the target people may not know that they are being interviewed. The same basic questions as in the formal questionnaire can be used. This kind of informal survey may be done through group meetings and discussions. Besides, the planners or designers may spend time living in the community in order to collect the needed data. In conducting field surveys of needs, either formally or informally, renewal methods should be used in order to test the reliability of the data obtained. Also, it is necessary to do two further things. One, to prioritize needs in order of their significance and two, to determine which of the needs can be met through a program of post-literacy. Five, range and selection of formats for post-literacy materials. There is a wide range of print and non-print media available in education. The following general criteria should be considered when selecting the most suitable format. A. Needs and literacy levels of clintail. As neo-literates seldom have enough time to study in school or special literacy class, it is necessary when selecting a format to be aware of what type of format the target learners would like to use even in a limited time frame. When producing posters and audiovisual materials to be presented to a group of people, it is particularly important that the literacy level of the overall group as well as that of the individual member should be known in order to employ an effective format for the group use. Since literacy levels within a post-literacy program are defined in terms of competencies, the materials must be carefully designed at the appropriate level of competency in terms of reading, writing, numeracy and general mental skill. B. Location and conditions where the materials are to be used. It is necessary to know the type of setting, environmental conditions, where the materials are to be used and in what manner they are to be applied. Materials such as posters should be displayed prominently, preferably on a large wall over a long period of time, in locations where people assemble. Audiovisual materials normally require facilities and equipment such as electricity and slide projectors. The producers of such material should be well aware of the locally available resources and the background of the target learners in trends of their culture, custom and preferences. The producers of such materials should be well aware of the locally available resources and the background of the target learners in terms of their culture, customs and preferences. C. How the materials are to be used. In producing materials for post-literacy such as games and comparatively thick books, care should be taken that they do not require excessively detailed guidelines for their application by instructors. The format must be carefully considered so that the materials can be easily accepted and understood by the instructors from the outset. A format which involves complications or problems in applications or does not clearly and simply convey the intended message should be avoided. Materials for post-literacy should be activity-oriented, stimulating learners to participate in educational games, simulations, creative production, active drill and other forms of interaction. Media should be chosen to ensure that the learners and not presenters take the responsibility for the learning. D. Means of production and their cost. Cost of materials production varies greatly depending on the format. It is therefore important to select the best possible medium within the limits of the budget. It is sometimes possible to find cheaper alternatives without too great a sacrifice of educational standards. For example, a well-produced set of picture cards may be cheaper to produce and use than a set of color slides. Another aspect of materials production for post-literacy concerns the quality of illustrations. Good quality illustrations should be used in almost all educational formats. For example, keywords and sentences to be introduced at each level of competency should be appropriately illustrated with drawings, diagrams, photographs and other types of graphics. 
illustrations are evaluated strictly through vision and should therefore always be of a high quality. It is important that illustrators are fully knowledgeable about the subject matter and the educational approach. In addition, the points should be kept in mind when preparing illustrations for post-literacy materials. Our illustrations should be attractive, interesting and enjoyable. Accuracy is important. Use simple, clear and accurate representations of the subject to be illustrated. All sketches, photographs, abstractions and cartoons should be recognizable by the target reader. Features such as human figures, clothing, scenery, structures, tools and so on should be shown conforming to the situation found in the community of the clintail concerned. Illustration of cultural aspects, leisure activities, medical practice, work practice, scientific activity and so on should be appropriate for the field or discipline involved. 6. Characteristics of various formats and media for post-literacy materials. Each of the various types of media and formats for the post-literacy materials has its specific characteristics. These characteristics need to be understood if there is to be an effective match between the needs of the clientele, the subject matter, the educational approach and the content. A. Printed book. Booklets and books for post-literacy should contain the number of pages determined by the standards set for each level of competency. Within a post-literacy program, a book or booklet is basically something to be kept by the individual and read at leisure whenever desired. Themes suitable for booklets should consist of well-ordered, easily understood series of explanation or have an easily understood story-like progression. B. Printed non-book while there are several formats possible here, the most common printed non-book is a poster. The basic function of a poster is to clearly present visually and directly a message to many people at once. While the poster is an effective means of conveying a lasting impression in a short time, communicating detailed information is not feasible by this medium. Posters can be categorized as either campaign types designed to strongly project a single message or instruction oriented, illustrating and explaining through a single scene or series of scenes some relevant information. Posters can be applied in a variety of ways, especially as instructional aids for various levels of post literacy. Usually they are associated with some other resource such as learner's workbook, a text or audiovisual material. C. Audiovisual media. While there is an extensive range of these media, the most commonly used within post literacy programs include the following 1. Educational games. Games can be divided into two categories they are ordinary conventional games and simulation games. Ordinary conventional games include numerous traditional games of each country together with many new variations designed for children with necessary modification to suit adult neoliterates. Simulation games present an issue or problem and suggest its solution through role play. This provides an effective means of involving the learners directly in an activity that requires little or no preparation of materials and is relatively risk-free. 2. Folk media Folk media are perhaps the most interesting and attractive audiovisual devices to use in the absence of electricity. This, however, is not always fully recognized by the clientele or by material developers. Direct to way communication can occur between learners and presenter and so the medium is highly personal. The medium is especially rich culturally and reflects the traditions and values of each community. The challenge for the materials designer in post literacy programs is to devise and create new and appropriate folk media as alternative resources with each cell of the curriculum grill. 3. Radio program Radio broadcasting has much to offer within post-literacy programs and is clearly not a poor second to the more immediately attractive television. 
Some rural communities are so isolated that transportation and communication are difficult. They are isolated not only physically but culturally which can be far more damaging to person's state of self-being than mere physical isolation. Geographically remote places, however, may be within range of radio broadcasts. As a means of reaching the vast majority of rural people, radio is therefore a most suitable medium. With the small transistorized radio, more people can be reached and listeners need not be fixed in one place in order to receive the information. It is not uncommon in both rural and urban areas to see men and women walking along, listening to a portable radio carried in a shirt pocket or to see people working with a transistor radio close by. 4. Photonovella this effective format for neoliterate materials tells a story through a series of photographs arranged in sequence as in a booklet. The photonovella is well suited for visually and realistically conveying content in an impressive manner. It can be employed easily in presenting desired scenes in cases where an artist is not available to produce drawings. Fifth, video programs. The video medium either broadcast or packaged as video cassette tape is a powerful learning medium. It can have the following characteristics. Now universally recognized and effective for everybody, fosters concrete understanding of ideas, concepts, principles and procedures, highly motivational, usable in a wide variety of situations, can be readily combined with other media. In the countries in Asia and the Pacific, organizers and teachers of post-literacy programs should design, write and produce specifically targeted post-literacy materials on the basis of surveys of target needs and their previous language background. Frequently, however, post-literacy organizers and teachers have to use and adapt materials for neoliterates already produced by various government and non-government agencies. This is more difficult for post-literacy than for basic literacy since the indicators for the various literacy standards are more complex involving not only standards for advanced levels or reading, writing and numeracy but also for the development of a range of relevant mental skills. Nevertheless, some guidelines can be given to assist program organizers and teachers the selection of appropriate materials. In most cases, however, some adaptation would be needed to ensure an exact fit with parameters of the curriculum. Some steps are suggested as broad guidelines. Step 1. Establish the objective for which you want to find materials. Step 2. Study the content areas for which you need materials, example, to teach about health or agriculture, etc. Step 3. Be specific about what type of materials you are looking for, such as printed book materials, printed non-book materials, games and plays, or other media materials. Step 4. Decide whether you want to use the materials for A. Motivating the learners B. Instructing them on certain content areas C. Using as follow-up materials D. Group use E. Using through electronic media, the radio, television, etc. Step 5. Choose appropriate formats for the materials. Step 6. Check that the resource is at the appropriate standard or competency level and that it satisfies the indicators of the standard. If necessary, modify the materials to make more precise match. Ok students, we have come to a conclusion of design and development of literacy materials. Do you have any questions? What are the frequently used media for post-literacy programs in Asia and Pacific regions? Good question. As per the UNESCO Principal Regional Office for Asia and the Pacific Regions edition on post-literacy programs volume 2, they are using four types of media. 1. Printed book, books, booklets, photonovella, comics. 2. Printed non-book, poster, leaflets, wall newspaper, periodicals and journals, flip charts, picture and storytelling boards, flash and picture cards. 3. 
audio visual media, puppet play slides, movie and video CDs, radio and TV programs. 4. Games and others, conventional games, card games, puzzles, snake and ladder, purchase simulation games, folk dance and songs, etc. Do you have any more questions? Okay students, now we have completed our lesson on design and development of literacy materials. Thank you.